right now. Like I'll give you a, for instance, before coronavirus, we went to play this, this, uh, this place called Eddie's Attic, right? It's in Atlanta, Georgia, which actually- Very we're gonna, legendary. We're actually going to do a whole episode. I've actually, I've actually so been incredible. there. Incredible. Yeah, actually incredible. Have you been there? Yeah, I've been there. I'm, I, I lived in Atlanta for a little while. Okay, so um, Eddie's Attic, yeah. you know what it is. So we went to play Eddie's Attic. Um, Jessely almost sold the room out, right? Her first time there, she almost sold the room out. At the time, she only had 24,000 streams on her single. Well, and I had half of, I had less than half of my fans. Yeah, less than half of, it was actually about a 10th of the fans that she has now. Well, she, I'm talking just on Instagram. I had, that's true. I had 15,000 fans at the time on Facebook and I had 30,000 on Instagram. This was before Corona because this Corona, is different. I'm, yeah. I'm going to put a pin on that just for a second. And I want yeah. people to really understand this. And I, and I'm very passionate about this one method. You create ambassadorship. You might have 15,000, 30,000 fans, but that's equivalent to their 2 million. Right. Because I, I pay attention to, I, this is when I had this idea, I looked at your thread and I, I looked, I see, I'm the kind of entrepreneur that looks and measures and reassesses everything. I need to have the right information and data. And that's why Steve and I click so much. I yeah. need to have all the data there for me to make the proper adjustments and to make the best decision. Cause I don't, as an entrepreneurship, I'm not going to move unless it's going to get me to the outcome. So I'm much mm -hmm. rather just wait until I get all the data and I'll make a move. So when yeah. I was looking at your thread, you have, and they're, and they're the same people, right? Oh, and, wow. and and there she'll post something and it's there's real engagement there. Yeah. yeah. And there's it, real engagement. And, so and that's, that's important. I've worked so hard for that being so hands-on. And because of Corona, my whole mindset was, well, I'm not going to be able to be live touching these fans in person. So I need to still show them love through yes. a screen. And my showing love was, Hey, and I, it's me. Like, I want to make this very clear. I have 300, over 300,000 fans just on Facebook and Instagram alone. And I legitimately, when I am commenting, that is me. I'm taking the time to respond to these people because I will be truthful with you. I had a very short period of time where I had someone helping me and they were mm -hmm. not able to talk and give the energy off that I give off. And it because just- Because they're not you. They're not emotionally invested into your message. No, and it wasn't working. Point? Yeah. Absolutely, and it wasn't working. And I was like, I need to do this. So started doing it. And I started realizing that I was really cultivating these really deep relationships with people who became not just like passive fans, but super fans. Yeah, and, and I want to make a point. I want to circle back around to the Eddie's Attic thing, but I want to make a point here. All it takes is 10,000 super fans to spend $100 for you to be a millionaire. Yeah. That's true. it. You know, it takes a thousand fans to spend a hundred dollars to make a hundred thousand dollars. That's true. it. Which is, and so people are worried about numbers, 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 but they're not worried about the right number, which is real cultivated, real fans. And so when we went to play Eddie's attic, that was really evident because Jess, Jessie had 24,000 streams on her single, right? But there were real streams mm -hmm. on Spotify. Well, two days before a major Which label is a whole artist, another thing it's a whole itself thing. We'll talk with about labels that in a different and what they're doing to push on Spotify. But um, but the, we had we played two days after a major label artist whom I won't name, and as a major label, like one of the right, big. Can ones. I please? Can I please tell him? You may not, because I, I I've made my living of poking the bear. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, you know, so anyways, go ahead. We'll six, tell you secretly behind this. The she had six, backstage. <laughs> she had six million streams on her single, and she only she sold thirty five less tickets than Jessie, right? Six million streams yeah. versus twenty four thousand. She sold thirty five less tickets two days apart, and so what? Yeah, that, my single had just come out. Mm -hmm. It was right at twenty four thousand. And we were touring that single and we literally got there and the owner was like, who this are you? Life? Yeah. Who like, are, like, who are you? And, right, I, okay. and he was like, you just outsold this artist. <laughs> from, from like, I don't know. Like, I mean, I don't look at these numbers. Like it's, I'm, it's a byproduct of you though. That yeah. is, and that's, and that's the source. That's it's it. Amazing. They're like a beacon light. You know what I mean? So, and that's the whole thing. People, you don't need to read about you and listen to the music to hear. They actually feel you through the music. That's right. Well, that means a lot to me because, you know, um, I have a very not being mainstream and and being with that, uh, being with a major label. You know, I'm always striving to do that because I already know going into it that my stuff is only going to reach my network, you know. Yeah. 
And right. and I have to make that count every time. And I always want to make sure that people are feeling me through my music. But also that's why I was so excited to jump on about this because I haven't done anything like this. Like I've mm. literally never done anything like this. I've had so many people ask me, why don't you just start a podcast? Why don't you do this? And I was like, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. And you know, it took Chris Ross coming into the picture and moving that fear out of the way, because I think I've literally just realized that, you know, it was literally the fear of being like, oh, well, I've never done this before. Yeah. So like, how am I going to do Ooh, this? You're hitting, a, you're hitting something past, you're hitting something right now. And I don't know if you've actually paid attention to this. The official partners that I have within Winject Studios and the ones that are right beside me, the ones that are the ones that I'm leveraging are all women on yeah. purpose, on purpose. That's amazing. Well, that's smart. I mean, let's be honest. Women drive, they rule the world (laughs) and they drive, they drive traffic. It goes back to, you know, me being plugged into my source and my gift that I got from my older sister when I was born into this world and placed Mm -hmm. into her crib, she was handicapped and I I learned how to speak intuitively and non-verbally. Yeah. And that type of connection, that's how, that's my gift that I received. So I wear the memory of her, like a badge of honor. Like I, I've, she is my driving force and me and understanding my gift. I thought I was freaking nuts. Okay. And yeah. I was, I was beating people by margins and gaps. Yeah. And they're like, how are you able to do what you do? So I started, I didn't read sales books. I never read any of the bullshit. So it excuse me for any salesperson out there. And you think, you know, sales, you get on the phone right next to me. I will work you into the ground because <laughs> it's how I make people feel. And I immerse myself so much into the other individual. I feel what they feel. Yeah. And, so when I started studying the psychology and the biology and the chemicals in the brain, I back in 2008 and I took off. Yeah. And, and this kind of goes, and then now I made a comment. It had to have been before I interviewed you. It was right at the beginning stages. I'm like, this is the decade for female entrepreneurs. I'm telling you, this is the decade. They're already murdering it and killing it. But I'm talking about inspiring the new entrepreneurs that are yeah. going to come in and they're the entrepreneurs they have now, the ones that, and I'm going to name drop the ones that I've met They're Tell me the most horrific stories about their growth and mm-hmm. the shit they had to overcome, but now they're here. So now they're going to start pulling up all the, all the new ones and giving them, that's all we're doing here with this opportunity. It's creating an environment and creating a platform and creating a system where we're not going to conform. We're not going to do what everybody else is going to do. And this is how we're able to go about doing this. And as one word, we're able to do it together. Right. Hell yeah. Co- co-creation. co-creation. And you want to know what's crazy? What's more powerful first off than a woman entrepreneur, right? But a woman entrepreneur with their hand in media as well. That's what's up. Like I, we, we. (laughs) So if you're guys, if you're listening to this in the audio and you want to watch the videos of this, you go to winjet.com. We'll explain that later. But this is what we've been doing like with this frame. (laughs) I don't know why I literally can't control my body. It's backwards. Yeah. (laughs) It's confusing me. Anyways. Like, I will never get it. I don't know why. But, you know, I, I was thinking about that. Steve and I literally had that epiphany the other day talking about, you know, kind of what you were saying. Like, this is this is the, fe- the, the, the future is female. I really believe that. And I think mm-hmm. that obviously, like, I'm, I'm, I'm about person power, to be honest with you in mm-hmm. general. I am no feminist by any means, but well, I, be I do honest. love seeing successful women, but yeah. my whole thing is being successful in, in yes, an entrepreneurial aspect as well. But I have a passion to be combing culture. Like I want to be someone that's a good You're example. A trendsetter. You're a trendsetter anyway, but here's, and Thank here's you. my, the mess, the message. You're welcome. And the message that I want to, I, I actually try to articulate to individuals yeah. is that all we are is energy yeah. what you see is not real like mm-hmm. I'm, I'm you know what i mean you can might see me physically and if you're here you touch me but all i am i'm an energy field this is a so, physical vessel for what 100 and that's yeah. all i am as a vessel through me i'm able to manifest and do whatever i need to do if i have the right energy and i'm tapped into my your thoughts turn into emotions so why like energy is it just literally means your thoughts turn into emotions thoughts in motion so yeah. energy in motion, going into stuff. So when you're talking I about say, female, I say, I say uh, tr- or no, not triple. What's four? Quadruple. Yeah. Quadruple T's. Thoughts Quadruple. turn to things. Uh, that's perfect, and, and that's perfect. And but you can't control your thoughts, but you can direct them to a positive outlet. And I speak a lot on this. Exactly. So when I 
you know, obviously I'm working with people, I'm working with individuals, not, not just because I have females here. I'm talking about it's the energy that I read. I speak energy fluently. Yes. So when it's the, I'm not searching for energy that is only one side and it's not recyclable. So you have energy that is recyclable because you can, you have the capacity to withstand my energy into you. So when yeah. I'm talking with you, your energy is going right back into me and I'm plugged in. Well, it's that's, because we're all in that same frequency though. Like that, that's right. what it takes to co-create properly. Like we were attracted to each other for a reason. Like you, 100%. one of my favorite things that Abraham Hicks says is you can't get there. Like you can't get there from there. No, nope. like you just, you can't like, you gotta go through you it. have to, it's like trying to listen to rock music when you're listening to country music, a country music station. Well, that's you know what I mean, like you're tuned into country music. You're not going to get pop and rock. Mm -hmm. That's you know the whole I mean? idea behind being a musician anyway, is reciprocal energy with the people that you're sharing your energy with. Right. 100%. Not, did I say country music? I meant to say music, but, right. but the, the interesting thing is, you know, you know, when there's a vessel of energy on the stage, that's what makes somebody a superstar yeah. versus just somebody who doesn't succeed. 100%. 100%. Is, connection to, is connection to people and being able to absorb their energy and then take it and give it back to them in a way that's consumable. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's why people become superstars and why people like, may not be incredible singers, but end up being incredible entertainers because they know how to harness that energy and then take it and street fighter it straight back to them. Like, oh, you Pol yeah, you polarize out. I mean, you, you polarize that out through individuals. Like, like even myself, when I'm speaking on stage and doing what I'm doing, the reason why I'm, I don't get exposed because I put into work when no one was watching, but yeah. I'm polarizing that energy through you, yeah. not to you, through you. You're taking it through, right right all the way you. through. So mm -hmm. it is at some point it's going to go back and go right, recycle right back into me. But I want to touch on one thing that you mentioned. You talked about the a hundred bucks of your, the listeners you have, each one spends a hundred bucks for a thousand of them, right? It turns in a hundred thousand dollars. And a lot of artists don't understand the power, the compound effect when you're doing the right things. That's right. Okay. So, and this is what another component of what we're doing here with Winject Studios. Winject Studios is not a network. We are a community. We come to focus on community first to collaborate, to make a collective impact. How we go about achieving this is having the right energy fields to come together as one. Mm -hmm. And so we mentioned the, you know, obviously listeners. So one thing that we're going to do with, you know, Jess Lee's content, and we've all agreed on this. And obviously um, Steve and I had so many conversations behind this. So that way Jess Lee can just focus on being Jess Lee. One thing that we're going to do, if you're, if you can, if you're listening to this content, we're going to utilize the audio as a podcast, yes. but to watch this, what you need to do, and we'll take clips of these and posting them on social media we're opening up the doors when winject.com you text it and also text us at just 843-396-2104, 843-396-2104 and text the word Jess Lee. That's going to go and trigger, go into the keywords, go into a funnel and go into there. And so that way you have access to all the behind, a little bit more behind the scenes content and stuff that we're going to be doing on these shows. This is only episode one. And as you probably can tell, we're, it's, we're, we're coming in hot. Well, hot. What's, what's exciting to me is, is the, the idea of letting our fans, it's direct to consumer marketing again, basically, or direct to consumer touching them with our energy, 100%. allowing people to see what it's like with Jessie on the road while she's creating, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. And yes. doing the things that she loves that makes her. And to recharge. Her. Yeah. Right. And, and not only to perform and be an entertainer, but uh, the things that she likes to do whilst we're on the road and how she recharges on the road by doing fun things and eating at cool places and going on Segway tours and watching me fall off the Segway and beating <laughs> me at ping pong. You know, it reminds oh, me to tell you the ping pong story when she was playing our bass player at, at this, at this uh, resort when we were in, where were we when you guys were playing? I don't remember. They had a crowd around them because she's playing in a bikini <laughs> And he's, oh, playing, cool. yeah. he's playing with no shirt on. And I'll tell you the story sometime, but it was like Dreamweaver, you know, Ooh, Dreamweaver was playing in the background and it would only be interrupted by her going. Pew! 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 <laughs> right. But I think, I feel like Chris knows, I think I mentioned I was, I was like a summer pro tennis player at one yeah, point. Yes. Like, ridiculous. I do. So yeah. That was like, a lot I got, of your story. Yeah. So I got with my, my bassist who I ended up finding out that he was the same. 
and we had never known this. And then there was this little mini tennis table and we were just like, we we're like, we got to go right now. And it just, it became like, let's just rally to let's keep score. And the second we started keeping score, it's like, ah, oh, ah. Oh. And we're like, <laughs> we're yeah, like, she's all like, oh. Uh, he's all like, ooh, ooh. I have and so then, many comments right now, but I'm not going to say it. You know, the like part, the best part about it was Chris, and you have to have the video to see the full effect of what people were like. So there's people are watching. There's a whole bunch of dudes watching, a whole bunch of women watching. So Jessie, you know, she's in her in her bikini. She wasn't intending to look. Like she was just out there enjoying the swimming pool. We didn't even know there was going to be a. We didn't have any table. idea. We had no idea. I so, was planning on tan and look how white so I am. Everybody started cheering. For We're like white Italians right now. You know what I mean? <laughs> I'm, the, so I'm the whitest Italian that ever lived. Everybody started cheering for Jackson because when Jackson would score a point, Jesse would run and get the ball, and it was like she'd go in slow motion Baywatch style, <laughs> right? And then. She'd be, she'd run over to get the ball and she'd bend over to pick it up. And everybody, I sh I'm not even kidding. Chris would go and take their glasses <laughs> no, they down. Would not. And like everybody at the pool, the men, the women, no, the dogs, they'd all take their glasses the dogs. Off, <laughs> and their, their eyes, their eyes would get like saucers. And then she'd turn around and everybody would be like, yeah, and then even the fun, funnier part of the story is like if someone was no offense to blind people, they're having the stick and they turn around. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there's a blind guy, he's taking his glasses down because he can feel it, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and then Jackson turns around and he's like, You're welcome to everyone. <laughs> Man, I, I guess, you know, that, you know, this is kind of is a perfect example. And it's funny when you put a lot of thought into things and you start to manifest, you start to build and create. And all of a sudden, I'm, I'm really dialed in on building the infrastructure and doing it the right way. When you want to do something massive, you know, you start reaching out to all the, the partners that we do have. And this is exactly what I kind of envision of coming on and interviewing you and us three having a phenomenal conversation, talking about all the things that you're going to do and the deep and dark secrets that you normally wouldn't, <laughs> you don't have access to. Yeah. And you, th that kind of story right there is priceless. Nobody would know that except for the 30 people watching. Jesse well, that's what I'm saying. In slow motion to <laughs> right. Get Ball out of right, right. This, this is actually a perfect example of this. Like I Wait have it's all on video. <laughs> right. Exactly. <laughs> I've actually, <laughs> I've actually had, um, one sake, I don't like to call them fans. I've just had people that have followed me for a very, very long time. And, yeah. you know, through my journey in success and they've, you know, of course the ones that they don't know, I don't never met these people, but they, you know, they're, I've created an ambassador show, something we share. Yeah. And people, the only time you're able to get a glimpse in catching my story and going deeper is it this was through podcasting. Yeah. So when I go on other shows, you know, I have a really good host and they'll, they'll pull out a little bit more of my story. And I had people following that. And then now I've created, I swear I got the idea. It's like, damn, that's collective impact. That's like, they went to this show now. They're listening to this show. And they're just because I, I was on that show. And that this is what it's going to do for you. I feel so lucky too, because like, I literally, my first podcast, I get the best host I could ever get. Oh, that means a lot. Oh, no, no. Literally, how did yeah. I get so lucky? And look how shiny and beautiful his head is. I, I right. wish I could reach through the screen and just touch As it. you said that, as you said that, and this has been happening all week, I receive your compliment and I and I appreciate it. But as we're recording, I'm looking up at the timer and the timer goes 4444. Wow. Hold on, 444. So I'm, my, my angel number is 111. But I, it's weird because listen to this. My birthday is also one one one. Yes. So, like, I started realizing that like all of this, all of it added up. And then when I read what one 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 meant, it was like just it literally all added up. So what does four 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 stand for? Um, I know that four forty four is an angel number. Um, because I know yeah. that for sure because of um, Laura Powers, the celebrity psychic I had on. I think I shared that episode with you. I went on her show. She was on the Ron Burgundy show with Will Ferrell. Yes. Yeah. Uh, by the way, he never broke character, like even including That's the thank you message. I still I need to, to listen gym. to that because I've it's heard people so, saying that. Oh wow, he's funny. I need to it's listen. So good. To, and it's funny you were listening to that before I even shown you what Anchorman was. Right. And so I turned it around. We we work out together, and I turned it around to Jess uh, Jessly, and I was like, "Look at look at this. It's a whole podcast is Ron Burgundy." And she was like, "Shut up." <laughs> I There's couldn't believe it. Uh, I didn't right. even know it existed. <laughs> I hadn't even watched Anchorman yet. <laughs> yeah, did you watch I, both of them? I, I people didn't like the second one. I enjoyed the second one. I, I maybe I'm weirdo. I haven't one. seen the second one. I saw the first one after I listened to the podcast, and then I really appreciated the podcast that he never broke character. At I all. love the first one. I could have lived without Baxter getting kicked, 
because I cry every time. <laughs> every time. Every time. But I'm, I'm there with him. I'm like, oh my God, Baxter. You know, have you ever watched Eastbound and Down? That's like my favorite thing. Oh my oh my gosh. <laughs> he's been a, he's like in season three or something and he's like he looks like a rick flair like wannabe and he's like a car <laughs> salesman he's like and he, it's it's freaking funny yeah it's oh I'll, I'll send it to you as a that's guy. okay I love it. Oh. Love shows. It's, but i guess we can kind of wrap up with, with episode one and i guess for the most part you know and i want to make sure that we're going to explain this to the listeners i mean this is only a glimpse of what's to come and yeah, i mean very you know, small glimpse and very small glimpse. And there's going to be, you know, we're going to do a bunch of different type of series and special episodes talking about, you know, like the next episode coming up country fest and go all the way into it. And, you know, just even some of the experiences from, you know, the different types of, and that's one of the questions I always want to ask you is like the different parts of the world, like the different vibe and the different feel of the fans. Does that change your approach when you're on stage? And I think that's where a lot of like artists, they want to get there early and they kind of can feel the vibe of the city and they know how to deliver the message. Right. Right. That's, and obviously it might be a little bit deeper for some people to understand, but it's true, you know? And yeah, like when I, right. Then I, when I speak on stage, I'm like, you know, just like, and obviously not obviously the magnitude you will obviously entertain. I try to calm people down. Cause like I need to match. I need to get on their level of energy. Mm -hmm. And once I kind of, and once I calm them down and like, you know, I do some type of exercise and once I'm able to get in tune and get in cadence with that, then I can raise it. Boop. And raising yeah. it through the roof. It's so. it, 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 I feel that. It's weird though. Like I think Steve can vouch for this. I've always, no matter where I go, I've always had this idea. You can either like get on the energy of everybody else or you can control the energy in the room. Yeah, and that's really, powerful people. I, I'll tell you I what, really though. believe this. I'm not even kidding. I It must just be because like subconsciously I've set this in my mind this way. But since I was a little girl, you know, my mom was smart to – implant some things. I mean, obviously because of the the stuff that I've gone through with my father, you know, my mom was really big about trying to feed me all the positive energy she could give me through it. And one of the things she'd always tell me is she'd just be like, you're, you, you have this power. To, and I, I don't know if she was lying. <laughs> I don't know if she was placebo affecting She's me. Not. I don't know if she was placeboing me or not, but she always told me you have this power to just to just change people's energy, like go into the room, just believing that people are going to come up to your energy. Powerful. Yeah. It's powerful. I, There's only, you're, you're, there, it's a special individual. There's only ones are special and you have to be dialed in to be able to do it. It's go so ahead. interesting. So I've, I've always taken that and I had heard people talking about the method that you take and it literally was like, Oh, people do that because I literally would just like get on stage and I'm like, I'm going to make this crowd just have a blast. Like, I don't care where right. they're at. I'm going to bring them to my level. And like, Steve, I feel like I can vouch for that because it's been literally, I can have like, for instance, we were playing a really intimate venue that isn't very like, there's not a lot of wow to it. There's not a lot of like glam factor with lights and production and things like that. It's very just like intimate and quiet. And everybody came in there and they were all kind of shy. And then like, by the end of it, I had this room singing with me and clapping with me and they're standing up and it's an acoustic <laughs> show, you know? And like, it was just, That's um, true. it was just, it, it's it, interesting. It, that energy, that energy motivates people because you're tapping into the subconscious part about them is when they were not, they're seeking bliss every day. Right. You, you see what I'm point? Like when we're children, yeah. we jump into a puddle. We, you know what I mean? We, we, we experience happiness, and I speak a lot on this. Yeah. Choose happiness over everything. Absolutely. She is just somebody that, you know, when I first started, started managing her, the first show I played with her, I flew to Florida because her guitar player bagged out on her like a week before show. This so, was actually our first time like ever playing music with each other. Yeah. We had no idea he was going to come. My guitarist literally canceled the week before he saved my ass. And this was actually the weekend. We were just friends. And this was the weekend. Just a little backstory. Steve is my manager. This was the weekend. He ended up starting managing me because he was there at the performance mm -hmm. and saw me live for the first time. Mm -hmm. He literally came into the show, had never seen me live. He's just like, yeah, sure. I'll save your ass. So he, he flew out. We flew him out. He comes out, saves my butt. And he's like, he gets off the stage and he's like, I think I want to manage you. And, um, when you know, later, you know, when you know, you know, on, yeah. Later on down the road, just so everybody knows 
part of my story is Steve also is my boyfriend and he was, he managed me first and then about, and then about, (laughs) and then about four or five months in, I pursued it. And then about four or five months in, I pursued the hell out of him. And I was like, you're going to date me. And that's the way it's going to go. That's not how (laughs) Let me just tell you. I, I can't. I can't comment on the one person that's going to listen to this, right? But you know, you know, we both. I just thought about this. I'm like, it's going to go down. Okay, I'll catch up. It's going to catch in reality at this one point. Literally, right? Well, so, yeah. <laughs> That's not how it went down. Cause yeah, it was, is. Uh, yeah. He was playing infinite game. He was like, yeah. man, I'm getting on a plane. I'm going to fly there. I'm going to get a plane and knock I'll it out and play the guitar. Oh. And then I'm going to ask her because she's not going to date me right off the bat. So I'm going to ask her to be her manager. I'm going to be your manager. Exactly. Brother. And then it I'm was gonna... a secret game. Ooh. I know. And he played it good because like, by the end of it, I'm like, Wow, you really you gotta care. have your angle. Wow, you, you really gotta care have about it. me, and we spend so much time together anyway. So date me, date me, and I was <laughs> like, okay, this is going to happen. But I have to say though, I have to say, and just because I know your story, and I know the you know the, obviously the traumatic things that you've had to overcome in your life, right? Yeah. And and it's, it's important to kind of mention this, and what Steve is. And, and, and I don't want to get emotional because I, I love him to death. Just the, <laughs> the amount of time that I've spent with him. But he gives off the he gives off the impression like I'm I'm here and I can protect you I got you and he gives he you that does. comfort and that's a very hard thing to kind of deal with if a, a, a woman has past experiences coming from her father and yes and, th- 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 and that needs to be applauded more in today's world oh my god are you kidding so, me? especially right. for the fact that I'm not like an a, I, I wouldn't say I'm a hard person to love, but I'm your classic. I am. I'm, I, would say I'm <laughs> I, <your> am. <laughs> I would say I'm your classic independent woman who I have my own life. And he came in and just wanted to be integrated in it. Like he, he well, is the fit somehow just well, fit I was somehow. An artist. Yeah, like, I was an artist too. And yeah. I retired to manage her and to be in her band because I felt that first show I was getting at, you know, I, I played this show with her and the whole time I'm playing guitar. Right. And I'm just staring at her like this because <laughs> I couldn't believe what I was seeing. Like I had never, cause I, I was an artist, you know, and I toured all over the country. And like she said, there's a special thing about people who can capture people and get them on their own energy. And Chris, I played shows, hundreds of shows across the country, casinos where I'm playing, I'm taking solos, I'm bearing my soul. I'm singing my ass off or what I thought I was singing my ass off. And I look out in the audience and there's an old woman going like this, ching at a casino, ching not paying any attention to that. Yeah, right. Yet when we played a casino right in the middle, everybody's like their jackpots going off and they're going like this at Jesse and there's, they're winning thousands of dollars. <laughs> and they're staring it's at not, it's not, and it's not, and it's not what she's singing, even though she does no. have a beautiful voice, but it's not what she's singing and words that she's using. It's about how she's making people feel. That's right. It's about the feeling and there's an authenticity right. behind the energy. Right. Right. And so that's what I saw the whole time. And that's as, as a human being and as a man, that's what I was attracted to. Now she's a Scorpio. So she's a pain in the ass sometimes, I but am. I love her to death. And I'm a Gemini. So I'm like real, like, just like, oh, I don't give a this shit. is why we work that's- because Gemini's are like so chill and they just kind of go with the flow. And I came in and I'm like, you're going to date me. 